in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create SQL-like views um, within Dataverse. So if you're not familiar with SQL views, it means being able to join data from different related tables. In a prior video, which I'll add the description in the link below, I'll show you guys how to do this using a Power Automate or Flow to call the HTTP request and get the data. Now the Power App supports uh, untyped objects. You can actually call this uh, HTTP request directly from within your Power Apps. So if you recall from the prior video, I show you that you can actually call Flow and using an XML request. So I'm gonna open up that flow real quick to remind you guys in the prior video. So from this flow, we're using the authenticated HTTP request in order to get do a get request. I'm simply passing some XML data, an XML query in order to get the data. What you can do now is you can actually copy the same XML query. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this XML query and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in a blank notepad. Now I'm gonna go back into my app and from within the app, you can actually use the same connector, the HTTP. So if you go to add data, you search for HTTP, you'll see in here there's an HTTP with enter ID pre-authorized. So this is the one you want to use. Once you authenticate and it gets added to your Power App, you can actually make calls to it. So, uh, yep, let me go back to my other app. And now what you can do is you can actually make that call directly uh, and store the results, the untyped object, in a variable that you can reuse later. So the one thing that you have to remember is that Power Apps does not like a double quote. So what you have to do is before you put it in there, make sure you replace those double quotes with a single quote, right? So you can grab the same XML query, which is already joining your different tables, and put it into the HTTP uh, connector. So you can go ahead and do it in both HTTP, make sure you do a get request because you're getting data, and go ahead and just paste. Uh, again, you gotta put it in double quotes, right? Make sure. And now when you press this button, it's actually going to return an untyped untype object. So in order to demonstrate, I am going to go ahead and open up the monitor. And let me go ahead and clear the results. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, call this, uh, press the button. If I go back into the monitor section, you'll see that it's actually invoked the HTTP request, right? Based on the request passed the XML query, and then it gave us the response. The response is an actual table, right? You can see it in here on your monitor. But what you want to do is, is you want to understand a little bit of the JSON that's being returned. So if I switch this to be the JSON view, and open up the body, you'll notice that I'm getting my results via uh, basically a JSON uh, string. So what I can do now is I can take a look at this, and I know that I want to get to my table of my array of data is actually storing this value, right? So what I can do is now is I can go ahead and pop this in a gallery and I can convert this uh, variable, right? And then I can transverse via dot notation to my value, right? Because this is the actual uh, array of data, right? So make sure that this is lowercase because it is case sensitive, right? Once I do this, you'll notice that this returns a table with untyped objects. Now, Power App supports untyped objects. Before you couldn't do this directly because, right, a Power App would not understand the response. But now that I have this, I can actually go in here and start doing that notation in order to get my field. So I can actually go into my picture and I can do this. This item dot, the reason why I do value in here is because this is the value of the table, right? So if you recall from this, there's a single column in here called value, right? So I'm going into this one column. Let me go into my image, right? This item dot value and then this name, pet image dot full image URL. Where did I get this from? If you look at your JSON payload, you'll notice that this is the field that I want. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this back into my, uh, in here. One thing that you have to be very careful is, is that every, 
all the field names that have dots in between, for example, this one must contain a single quote to begin with. You'll notice that if I take off the single quotes, right? Like this will not render. So make sure you put single quotes at the end, at, at, at the beginning and at the end. Same thing for the name of our customer, right? You can go ahead and say, you know, this item that value pet info, that pet name, right? Again, you'll come in here, you will look for the field name and then you will map it uh, into your gallery. You'll notice that this actually is live data. So if I was to change the city for this customer, Chewy, if I go back and look for Chewy, right, his city is not longer Bogota, but he's actually from uh, Barranquilla, right? And go ahead and do save and close. Uh, ignore and save, right? If I go back and play my app, I can reload that data. You'll notice that now Chewy shows up the latest and greatest data. And this is a left SQL. Uh, join because if I show you my data model right here, you'll notice that I'm pulling data from my pet appointments. I'm doing a left join to my pet table. And from my pet table, I'm doing another left join into my account. So I'm basically flattening all the information into one single view. So this is one way in which you can do SQL views, kind of using Dataverse, and you can present everything within one screen. You can take this further, further and you know be able to add you know, other type of uh, filters in here. Um, so this is just the beginning. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to show you different techniques in which you can filter this data. Uh, one of the caveats with this uh, method is, you, you know, the maximum number of records that you'll get back with an XML fetch query will be 5,000. So if you need to return more than 5,000 records, you're gonna have to do pagination in order to do that. Until next time, see you guys. Thank you.